Welcome to this episode of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be doing a bit of a comparison between the UpAir uh, version 2 and the Phantom 3 standard. So I get a lot of questions. I've got both. I've actually got two of these guys, got one of these, been flying both of them for a while. So I want to kind of talk everybody through sort of the pros and cons of each, how they how they compare, how they don't compare, and uh, those type of things. So uh, let's kick it off with, let's start with the basic airframe first. So move the scale out of the way for a second. We'll need that in a minute. So one of the things that, that I want to demonstrate here is the airframe in general is the same between both of these uh, units. So if we measure these up from center to motor center to motor center, it's about 350 millimeters as you see here, or 35 centimeters. So this is a 350 airframe. And uh, if we look at over here, and I think I can get this in, the uh, Phantom is the same, 350. They actually take the same props, the, the up air versus the Phantom, so they have the spin-ons. Uh, however, the Phantom is a and sorry, not the Phantom, the up air is a little bit physically bigger chassis-wise than the Phantom. Um, so you can probably see this body area. So this body area is roughly about, um, uh, so it's about 11 centimeters, and the body area here is probably about 10. So it's just a little bit bigger. Um, the stature of the up air is also a little bit taller. Um, it comes in about seven inches or say about uh, 17 millimeters roughly whereas I'm sorry I'm getting my hand in the way but um, it's a little bit shorter on the the Phantom it's got a little bit more of a top but it's a little bit shorter down you can kind of see the propellers for the Phantom are actually sitting below the um, up air so uh, but this bump here is a little bit taller because it's concave here but in general this sits a bit higher than the um, uh, Phantom by about I would guess probably about three centimeters uh, higher so the airframe on this one as I mentioned is a little bit bigger than the Phantom um, so let's take a little bit of a look let's bring the scale back and let's weigh them. Now I have the batteries out, so this is going to be without batteries. And this is not going to be scientifically perfect, but uh, it'll be good enough. Let me get this back over here. I think you can be able to see this. Move this out of the way. So I'm going to, I'm going to in short, rest it on the gimbal guard. So I'm about 720... Oh, I'm still going up. I would say 700, about 730, 729, stopped at 729 grams, 729 grams for this guy. And so let's go ahead over here, and let's set this guy on here. This guy is a little bit heavier, and I also have the gimbal guards on both, but they're basically the same size. Um, this guy is 759, so he's slightly heavier than this guy not by much now the other piece I want to do here is let's take a look at the motors themselves the motor diameters um, so we'll get the calibers and if we turn them on and we zero them out like we're supposed to and we measure we're measuring at about 28 millimeters if I measure the uh, up air, they're about 27.7. So they do appear to be different motors, same shaft size. Um, these seem to be a little bit taller now since they're in here. I can't really measure them, but I've taken the up air apart before. And I can tell you there's not much in here. So the motor, motors do seem to be taller here. Um, so that's the big thing on the airframes. Outside of that, they're pretty much identical being 350s. Now, one of the things that I want to do is jump to the cameras uh, because I've got the gimbal guards on. I'm gonna, I don't want to break the props here, but let's talk cameras for a minute. So I'm going to take the gimbal guards off. By the way, I've set up an Amazon store for these gimbal guards by the time you've seen this, so I'll have the link below if you're interested in uh, picking up a gimbal lock for one of these guys. Uh, this one's still a little bit of work in progress, so it's a little bit tighter. 
I take that guy off. So here's where the, there's the big difference. So with the uh, the Phantom, it has a three-axis gimbal. So you know, see how the camera can go like this. The up air's camera can't. It only has two axes, so it doesn't have a yaw axis. Now these are both 2.7K cameras. Um, the one thing I can say is the glass is better on this guy, and I would suspect that out of DJI. I'll spit it out because with regards to um, the camera itself, they've purchased Hasblad, and I'm sure they're not using Hasblad-based glass in here, but probably designs, uh, because this does have a, a superior camera to this, and I've had two of these. Um, standard uh, anti-vibration dampening mounts here, as both of them have the same, so no biggie there. Um, what I do like on the Phantom is it has ex it has a USB port here for the actual flight controller and a USB port here for the um, gimbal itself to update the firmware, which is really, really nice. So, uh, again, if you get into that. But this is where I think between these two, uh, it's worth a little bit of discussion. So you can be far more what I'm going to call for this discussion fiddly with this guy than you can this. This guy is more you take it, you fly it, you put it away. You really don't mess with it. This has a ton of configurations, and when we get to the controller, we'll talk a little bit more about that. However, before we get to the controller, one of the things I want to do is, is come back here and look at the battery. So, um, this battery for the Phantom, they're both smart batteries, by the way. The Up Air battery and the Phantom battery, both smart batteries. Uh, however, with this one, you'll see here, it has a port to connect to the flight control computer inside here, and you can actually program this battery. This battery simply has the two connectors for the power, and that's it. So you can't program it. It's whatever programs in it is in it. Um, however, in comparison to the batteries, again, this is a 15.2 volt, uh, 4,480 milliamp per hour battery where this is a 500, a 5,400 milliamp per hour battery um, at 11.1 volts. So a little bit of difference. Now, one of the things I want to do is, let me pull up the scale again. Let's weigh these batteries. So this battery is going to be about 250, 260 grams for the Phantom. And then the up air is going to be 280 so it's a little bit heavier but not by very much which really surprised me i was expecting this to be far heavier because again you can see sort of the battery size differentials um, in this uh, but very close um, the flight times are very comparable between the two uh, I think this probably might have a little bit better advertised flight time, but they're they're pretty much the same, uh, you know, if you're flying within reason that I've had with both of them. So from here, I've, I've talked about the general airframe, the camera, uh, both to use SD cards on the camera. I didn't want to go back now. This, the Phantom, at least when I purchased it, the standard came, I think, with an 8 gig card. This comes with no card. Both come with one battery. And that's what you get. So I tell you what, let's go talk. Let's go take a look at the controllers, and this is where the big difference is. Now, this is where really the big difference comes. Uh, this and obviously the flight controller. So one of the things, and this this is the version two. This is not the new app-driven uh, version, although this is a rather new one. It's only about two months old. Um, this screen is just that. It's only a monitor. All the telemetry comes from the copters. Uh, on-screen display or mini OSD as it's referred to and is transmitted and this is no more than a television set whereas the Phantom utilizes um, a, a, a tablet or a smartphone and I use a combination of the Nexus tablet or the Samsung Galaxy and I sort of have a military style case here that uh, goes in there uh, because one of the things the older DJ, DJI Go app does not run on the tablet. It knows it's a tablet, won't run, but it will, will run on the phone. So I use this for firmware upgrades and things like that, which you will have to do. And again, this is the big difference because 
this can be, the Phantom can be programmatically controlled. The Up Air in this version cannot. Now they have a newer version of the Up Air out and I had actually ordered it and I canceled the order because I downloaded the app and the app was very crude and um, I, I'm sure over time there they will improve the app but you know how long is that going to be and the other pieces you can get for the Phantom many third-party apps uh, like Leechy and Autopilot and that kind of stuff which I thought was really cool so again that's why I went with this uh, so that's really an important feature because this is where these are really two different um, beasts uh, they I, I really can't say outside of the size that you can really compare these this is more your classic quadcopter drone this is more of a photographic platform because one of the other pieces um, so for general quadcopter use there's two frequency bands open and they're both for Wi-Fi one is 2.4 gig and the other is 5.8 gig now 5.8 is not very crowded where 2.4 is extremely crowded and being lower is also very noisy so this next piece is, is a bit important because this unit right here uses uh, the up air uses 2.4 gig I believe for the control and 5.8 for the video whereas this the Phantom uses 5.8 or the less noisy channel for control and 2.4 for the video now when we take a look at the up air we see we have two antennas and when we look at the Phantom we only see one antenna that's because the other antennas are actually inside for the 2.4 gigahertz so it does have two also so this configuration actually gives it a very short range the other downfall or limitation probably better put with the up uh, sorry the Phantom is what happens is this tablet connects via Wi-Fi to this controller so you have your video come in by 2.4 gigahertz into the controller the controller rebroadcasts it to the tablet and the app in the tablet processes it there is a significant lag between all that and plus the 2.4 as I mentioned is very noisy so the, the positive here is you will you will have a better control or probably less interference with the 5.8 and probably a little bit better distance over the 2.4 over here but your video for if you're going to attempt FPV probably is not going to be suitable whereas with the up air with the, the video on 5.8 you can use a typical drone ground station like you've seen in my other videos you know the the, the um, sky 700 etc to record the telemetry and the flight information and all that which is very very neat and you can also get extended range out of the video and you pretty much get real-time video out of it so you can fly at FPV now neither of these are really FPV racing copters so it, it sort of depends what you want to do and again the concept is is you know the FAA says you have to fly in line of sight anyway so um, be it here or there I guess you know just you know understand how each works now that's why I really say these are two different beasts I don't consider these in the same league now the pieces really for me is the price of this versus this so this unit both of my units I paid to uh, 299 for and this I paid 416 so there is a pretty good price difference between the two now one of the things to understand is you're going to lose it at some time it's going to crash you see one of my first videos my first one which I'm rebuilding of the up air crashed into a tree minor crash massive damage it's going to happen um, so this is why any money you spend on a drone my two cents is be prepared to throw that money away because at some point in time that's what will happen so this is one of the things uh, one of the reasons I started out with the up air and I still am very impressed and happy with the up air for the 299 price tag or $300 price tag I think it's, it, it's a value for that uh, but you know understand what you're buying uh, for the Phantom, 
Is it worth 416? Yeah, it's worth 416, especially with the apps. But by the time you start adding all this stuff in, you know, at least another 100 for a tablet. You need to have a tablet or some sort of control device. So you're going to have another 100 or two there. By the time you buy Lychee or Autopilot, which you're going to really want to do over top of the DJI Go, you know, you're going to have more money invested in this than just the, the copter. Is it worth it? Yeah, it's it's worth it. But again, you know, you have to be prepared for the inevitable with this versus this. So, it, you know, as you've seen in some of my older videos, I, I started out with the SEMA X8, which was a great sort of entry, and I lost it in the lake. So, yeah, you know, 100 bucks down the tubes. You know, if I lose this one, all right, it's, you know, you know, probably about 250 because the controller is probably worth 50 bucks or so. And I can get another copter and go with the controller. So that's what I'm going to be out. This guy, on the other hand, is going to be more money. So if it drops into the lake, I'm going to cry far harder here than I am here. And this is sort of my point. Um, I've had very good luck with the up air. So some people complain now. This is why I explain about the noise. I get people write me all the time saying, hey, this happened to my up air, that happened to my up air. And 90% of it, I'm going to attribute to the 2.4 gig control plane of this. Because that's the first thing I ask. I use it in around a lot of homes or where there's Wi-Fi or microwave interference. And every time the answer comes back, yes. And I tell them, take it out to a farm field, take it away from that, and see how it flies. And most of the time, I never hear back from them. So I'm assuming that that's been a positive experience. Um, However, that's what you got to be aware of. And, and again, with the Phantom, you know, it's it's um, a little bit less prone to that. But again, you're going to pay more. And it's not it's not that it's not prone to it. It's you know, again, if you have a lot of people with 5.8 around, the same problem is going to happen. And as the 5.8 frequency or 5.8 gig frequency builds up, you're going to start having uh, some troubles there too. So again, it's inevitable uh, either way. So it really comes down to the price point. For this, I think for 300 bucks, it is a great quadcopter. I think for the 400 and something to 500, this is a great quadcopter. And that's really what you have to distinguish is how much do you want to invest to lose. And so if you're okay with investing to lose more, then this guy is a good investment. Now, the other piece that I'm going to forewarn you about, this has a greater learning curve than this, than the up air. Um, this, you know, you can pretty much, if you've flown a smaller quadcopter, which I'd highly suggest starting, you can pretty much take this out of the box, read the instructions, and go flying. This, you have to register the app, you have to learn how to use the app. You know, technically you can fly it by the sticks and pull it, but by the time you figure it out and do the firmware upgrades, you know, when, when I got this and I took it out of the box, you know, I probably had to invest a couple hours of just learning, waiting for the firmware to update and everything else to go fly it. And I'm still learning stuff on it. So that is a cool thing, but it's also an investment of time and you need to prepare to do that. If you're just a casual flyer, don't want to spend a lot, again, I still highly recommend the uh, older up air version. I did write Leachy and said and asked them if they're going to support uh, the new up airs, and their response was, "What's an up air?" So I think eventually that they actually will support it because it's just, you know, hey, it's a bigger market base for them too, right? Uh, but how long is that going to be? I really didn't want to wait, and for really, you know, what became, you know, a roughly a hundred dollars difference now between the two, I went with this. Plus, I wanted to review this or have this for my channel because one of the things on this channel, I want to have a little bit of diversity um, to share with you guys. So, you know, I've got the I've got the SEMA X8, I've got the SEMA uh, X5, I've got two up bears, I've got the Phantom, I've got the Hubzin. And, and I got some I'm building, like the S500 and the Flame Wheel. So I want to have a mix and match um, to kind of show everybody out there a little bit how they all can work together. And, and because, I, you know, one path might be better for one person than the other. You know, because I see this a little bit like Mac and PC, where this is more PC and this is more Mac. Because this is far more, you can fiddle with things and get a lot of cool stuff. And this one is just basically works out of the box and you get what you get. So, anyways, um, 
just kind of finishing up on the controller, the other thing with the up air is the up air utilizes a insertable battery, which you can take out, fits in the back, and is rechargeable. Whereas it's the uh, Phantom has a built-in lithium-ion battery. Uh, I've had this open. It's quite a bit smaller than this guy, but you know would would easily match uh, probably two to three batteries or, or you know flight batteries of time. You know of these to this battery, so that's that's fine. But um, you know also if it goes bad, which it will over time, you will have to open it up and figure out how to solder and remove it and find a replacement and that kind of stuff. So a little bit more work. Um, this also has a USB port for charging, where again this gets removed and attaches to the charger for the, for the um, it's got a dual charger for the main battery, which is over there, as well as this. You cannot charge both batteries at the same time. We'll burn up the charger, uh, but it also very effective. Uh, and again, as I mentioned, this is just a TV screen where you have the tablet. The basic functions outside of having an F function, uh, as this one does, this one does not. Well, with that, hopefully this has been a helpful video with, uh, for you to kind of explain the differences and similarities between the Up Air and the Phantom 3. So, hey, if it was, uh, give it a thumbs up if you found this interesting. Also, hit me up below in the comments if you have questions about either or, and I'll try to help them. And then, uh, hey, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.